have to do this on two different screens. So one second. Um, so perhaps after um, Mr. Mayo witnessed Keynes and Walkers getting caught on the edges between brickwork and sidewalk by tree sections. Um, if we could please add, um, however you say it to me, Mrs. Disorger mentioned, mentioned uh, the south, south side of Congress Street needed repair as people had fallen. Okay. And with that, I'd make a motion to approve if, if everybody agreed with that. I did say that. I'd second that in favor of approval. Unmute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. What's our vote? Yes. Yes, I approve. Yes, I approve. Sorry. Give me one second, sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're Can you tell me who, who motioned and who seconded again. I motioned. I seconded the floor to check in. Three to zero. Yep. Okay, Margo. Treasurer's report. Um, well, um, I sent it to everybody. Lindsay, I left you off the list. I just sent it to you. I'm sorry about that. Um, I just got back from an appointment, so I haven't really done it myself, but nothing changed. So whatever it was, it still is. <laughs> so I know that's not a very good treasurer's report, but... <laughs> That's okay. I, I, I have the numbers here. Okay. All right. Uh, the handicap parking fund is $2,825.05. That's right. And our general fund is $300. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, so um, open issues, um, I wanted to just quickly touch base about the Franklin County Bar Association, um, our event. Obviously, it did not go off. Um, everything was canceled uh, prior to that. Um, I will follow up with um, Jennifer Lively, who's our, my contact there. Um, but it's all dependent on um, both Greenfield Community College, which I don't know what they're doing yet in the fall um, or, or this summer, um, but I'm guessing that we are not ready to be doing events. So I think at this point, it'll just be on hold. Pretty sure that Greenfield Community College is an opening in the fall. Okay, I wasn't sure. I have a neighbor who said she's home in the spring. Uh, so I don't know. I don't think it's official, but that's what it's looking like, and she's been warned that. So. Okay. Um, I'm not going to jump ahead right now, but that will affect the CAM training as well. But we'll. We'll come to that in a few minutes. 
Um, yeah, I, I guess we're just all really in limbo in terms of any gathering of events, which is really a shame because I think this would have been a, a nice opportunity. Um, uh, just I just wanted to check in with Lindsay about an update on the Garden Cinema. Does, do you know what's happening? Oh, looks like she's muted. Okay. Hello. Um, really nothing has changed. They've got another extension from the AAB. Um, they're not, the company they're working with is not doing internal construction right now due to all of this. So um, as much as we'd love to have it be done while it's all closed up, because that would be the best for everyone, um, they're not doing construction right now. Okay. I, I kind of thought that, but you never. It was closed, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, I'll just remind you that if things do progress, I was still interested in doing what I call the dry run, so. Sure, I'll let them know. You said you'd let me know about that. Okay. Um, Okay, the um, next thing was the status of invitation to department heads. Um, and I know she's probably very busy, but I thought it might be really nice if we could include in our next meeting the head of the health department. Um, I'm sorry, what is her name again? I wrote it down. Val Valerie Bird. Oh, yeah. Um, or I can send her a note. Okay. We were uh, supposed to have Mark Snow and her in April, um, and I had put that on their calendars, but there was no way that was going to happen, and then your meeting didn't happen. So. Right. But I think we also decided that we would only have one department head at a time. I think that's best. Yeah. So I, m my suggestion is to have Valerie first. Okay. Um, since you know, I think it would be good to to be included in health department information. Yeah. Okay. Um, will you contact her or do you I want to send her an email? Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Alrighty. Um, and uh, the remote access status. Anything new on that equipment? I know we're doing this, which is very nice. I would love to be able to do this forever in the future uh, for someone who needs to, but um, I think unless they change the regulations once all that's this is lifted, I think it will change. So, so I wondered if if there was any more information on the equipment. I think we were on, once we started to get moving on it, we realized quickly that things were changing drastically. And so we wanted to see if we wanted to move forward or if the city's going to end up purchasing a bunch of equipment um, that everybody can have access to. There was oh. some question about what we what we need and what we can ha have. So okay. um, I'll follow up with IT. I don't know. At, at the time, they were kind of up to here. And I'm sure they're still up to here, but maybe up to here is the new normal. So <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, Jenny, do you have additional information? Um, I just, I'm, I'm just raised my hand in the picture if I have a question. Um, but on the last one to Valerie Bird on the invitation, um, would you, is it okay with everyone? Would we just word it so that we know what she's in the middle of and we were, we're hoping she could come back if she couldn't, um, like the next, month or something. I know you would probably do that, but I just think somehow it should say in there that we get that she's in the middle of this. But we hope, you know, we're inviting her. Is that okay? Over and out. Okay. And if for some reason she can't come, uh, maybe we could ask Mark then. We could We could substitute with Mark if he's available. All right. Um, 
I think I'll ask Ginny about the Elm Terrace bus stop. Has there been any further um, conversation around that? Have you spoken with Laura? Um, Nothing further has happened with the Elm Terrace bus stop. Mm -hmm. and that actually is just really due to the pandemic. There was a plan. Um, um, I'm actually forgetting what it was, but we have gotten more information on it. And I don't know if it was the mayor or Marlo or what, but nothing has happened because of this. Okay. And I have reached out to Laura Jordan once, and actually I hadn't heard back from her either, but I just, that, 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 no progress, no further communication and no further complaint, but I think we're, we just lost our, our focus went otherwise. Mm -hmm. I do remember at that last meeting with Marlo that um, it was also mentioned that the police chief was also going to be involved because of the issue around safety concerns. Um, so just um, go ahead. You're correct. I'm remembering that now. And all of this just seemed like, I do remember that, which I'd forgotten, but it was just like, this is not the time to ask anybody unless there's a fire, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, okay. There is a, if the, I just took a quick look at the minutes. Um, they summarized that um, information. So if you want to take a look at them again, you can see where things stood at the previous meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It it's generally aligns with what you said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I understand. I was just looking through the minutes and just kind of seeing where we were in terms of the last, uh, the last issue around that. Okay, um, um, I just had a question around building accessibility and planning, and I, I'm assuming that there is no new construction. I haven't been heard of any planning board meetings or seen any information. Is that correct, Ginny? Plan Planning board has been having a very bad time with this format. They were supposed to have a meeting this week and their meetings have been canceled. They had a meeting that was really rather important that everyone was already with their computers and it, um, the computer system failed. Uh, something, something went awry. So there's, um, to my knowledge, there's been one meeting with planning that I was not in virtual attendance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so as long as we're still on the list, once they uh, make any decisions, um, I think we talked about if there were some plans, if Margot could take a look at them, if you wouldn't mind. And as I said, I have, um, his name is Andrew Bristol, and he's the access specialist at Stavros, and he said he'd be happy to work with us as well if we needed some further input. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, did anyone have anything else to add about that? Um, the next thing on the agenda was the CAM training. Um, Again, um, it's, you know, everything is up in the air. I am going to guess that it will not take place in September, especially if, as Margot mentioned, uh, GCC is not holding classes. Um, so I will, I will double check with um, MOD and see what they're doing about the training sessions. Yeah. 
Go ahead, Jenny. And I don't think there's any, I don't think there's anything lost with waiting a little bit on that because, um, you know, got the ba Governor Baker is going to speak again. I agree with you. I'm sure it's not going to happen, but we can wait a little bit because if that's, in, if everybody else is in agreement, we could wait another month. We'll know more in a month. You know, what's happening to our new world. Yeah. yeah. Over and out. Um, and then the um, last thing on the issues was I wanted to just um, mention that I, uh, in, in terms of COVID-19, I got a um, email which I sent to everybody if you wanted to take a look at it um, from MOD, just basically reminding us that um, any programs, uh, implementing programs or support of residents with disabilities to make sure that reasonable accommodations and, com and communication is available to people with disabilities. So I'm going to assume that the mayor's office is aware of this, but um, just want to put that front and center to, uh, you know, be alert that if you see something that you think may need an adjustment, um, by all means, please let us know. I mean, I notice, you know, when Governor Baker is speaking, he's always got uh, an ASL person, and um, obviously we're not we're not that far advanced, but um, you know, anything that's going out to make sure that it's formatted in a way that people can can read it. Um, so just wanted to put that out so that people would be a, a, to keep their eye open for anything that they think might need to be attended to. Um, so I think that was it. Unless did anyone else have any COVID related information um, around disabilities? Ginny? I don't. I don't think I'm not missing anything. What's that? I don't have, sorry, I don't have any more information on it, but I, and I've, you know, I'm on Facebook and reading the paper, but I hope that we're not missing any needs on that. I do know that through the senior center, they have been reaching out, um, calling all people. They started with people over 80. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I can't think of any other way right now. It's, it's a very tough time because anybody who needs services, they're, they're not getting people into their homes to help, et cetera. And I don't know any answer to that. That's all. Lindsay? So I attend what's called the Franklin County Resource Network. It's a group of nonprofit leaders and government leaders to talk about all the different programs. So I've been involved in hearing a lot of updates. Um, I know Stavros is very connected to their people, their, the people they're serving. Um, I just heard today that the PCA union is going to provide PCAs with PPE um, so that that union will make sure that people have that. Um, I know that the food pantry is now delivering to a lot of homes and Stone Soup is doing delivery. Um, so I think there are some interesting ways in which by figuring, forcing programs to figure out how to get to people's homes, um, hopefully there's a little bit of a different access. Um, on that. So I know that a lot of programs are working on figuring out um, home delivery and other issues there. But, um, you know, if you are hearing issues, please let us know. But it's definitely a topic on the Franklin County Resource Network and one of the things we're paying attention to. I'm just not sure how easy it is to get a mask. Like if you are at home 
and and can't make your own mask. If you want a mask, I know you have a call or something, but what if people don't even have computers and haven't seen that and don't know about that? So it was, I, I answer the phone that okay. people call um, from 9 to 11 a.m. You'll probably get me. Um, and people have been calling. They've been hearing about us on the radio. They've been hearing about us from friends. Um, they have been hearing about us from various, um, again, from their people there who are providing services to them. And we are asking people to pick it up at the John Zion Community Center, but if you can't, we are delivering them to homes. We have delivered them a bunch to the Weldon. We've delivered a bunch um, all over. We've delivered over 500 masks at this point. It, it might be nice if like some of these food delivery people could have them, and when they deliver the food, they could ask if they need a mask. You know, just combine services somehow. Um, just a thought. Just a thought. Um, Lindsay, I need to get that number because I belong to Stavros. I have not been able to have my PCAs come because I could not get a mask. And I've not been able to get anyone at Stavros to help me. <laughs> um, I did just hear that uh, the union was going to provide masks for PCAs. But if your PCA doesn't belong to the union, can they still get a mask? That was a bunch of questions all at once, and I'll try to. Sorry. So the number is 413-775-6411. Okay. And you can call about all sorts of questions, not just masks. Mm -hmm. um, and people have been. And. I'm not sure about the union issue. Call that I'm on usually is two people from Stavros, um, both who seem like they're trying to get the information to other people, but maybe there's a internal communication issue there. Um, so I will let them know that that information has not been getting to the clients. Okay. Um, do you think it would be helpful to put this number on the CDA website, um, just for folks with disabilities? Um, sure, we certainly can. It is on the main website, but it probably might be, yeah, if people find you. Sure. Yeah, just, just a thought. Um, OK. Um, well, thank you. I mean, you you may have solved a problem for me. <laughs> uh, and Lynn, if you, if you need help, if you need someone to pick up masks for you that they have at John's on, I'd be happy to go get them. Okay. You, Lindsay, I think, are you sh pretty sure that they have some still at the John's on? Yes. Um, you, you do have to call ahead of time, but they do have them. And are, are these N95 masks or? Yeah. Oh, they're these certain. Are cloth these are donated masks they're cloth masks that oh, have well. been provided by the community um, okay. and since lindsay that's the COVID hotline that they call the number that you the COVID see. hotline yep they call the COVID hotline if you need a mask essentially yes okay okay good thank you i have to i have to go now but okay great to see you all and good luck and hopefully robin can provide additional information okay Thank, Thank you. you. Well, nice. I can go to all those <laughs> meetings. Thank you. Um, Robin or Ginny, do you happen to know if Lindsay was approved yet? As our I do not know. Okay, I meant to ask her. <laughs> I'm okay. going to shoot her with Slack right now. So we're well, looking to see if she was approved to be an official member of the CDA. Correct. Okay. I'm I'm gonna venture that um, maybe like everything else, there's been a pause on that, but I will ask it right now. Yeah, that's okay. I I can even email her. I'm sorry, Ginny. Did I you? I think it was. I know there's been a pause on appointments, and all appointments are coming up, which we are having a meeting next week. But I think Lindsay's story was 
the time frame, not an official appointment. But I'm sure that Robin, Robin, you can find that out in your spare time. <laughs> no, I, I'm being uh, facetious. Um, I don't recall seeing her name on the appointment list. So um, um, I, I thought she said it was enough time hadn't gone by. Oh, okay. So, so maybe um, um, could could we ask you, um, Robin, to to check that with Lindsay? Yeah, I just uh, can you hear me. I just shot her a, a Slack message asking about the status of that. I was just trying to see if there was anything in the minutes. I'm not seeing anything right now. But yeah, the only know. thing in the minutes, it wasn't quite clear. It was a, there was a discussion about her appointment. Uh, the mayor's office is aware of the request to appoint her as it is in the queue. Okay. All right. But it was very nonspecific. <laughs> I have reached out to the mayor a couple of times on that about our appointments. Mm -hmm. And I actually was so involved in the budget until last night that I haven't looked thoroughly through the appointment list. So mm -hmm. if, I'll, if I find out, I know I'm reappointed. If I find out that anybody, if I find that out, I'll shoot you an email or I'll, I guess I'll send it. That's, I can communicate that to everybody because that's not a violation. That's just information. Correct, Robin, I, I think. I can just send that out to everybody. Yeah, you can send it to everybody. Um, I, people just have to remember that you you should never reply. You should never reply all to a message that's sent to a group. It's um, you're just trying to stop any sort of deliberation that might happen by email. But sending information out for information purposes is totally fine. Okay. Okay. Um... Did anybody else have any new business or anything they wanted to ask or bring up? Uh, I, I don't, my, my only thing that I had been thinking of was what I talked about because I can see people on our street and I'm so glad that Lindsay was here to speak to that. I can see people who are not getting some services that they need. So I'm glad to hear about that. Other than that, um, I haven't. I'm not aware of anything else. I will say, I, I do want to say something else on a positive note. Um, and this is just for something because we are all at home. And you probably all already know this, but um, this was the first fun thing that I had done in two, probably two months. They, they, that they have a virtual book group through the library oh. is a very, um, it's just like this. You push the button and, and you see people that you haven't talked to. And I'm mentioning that because actually this is getting to be something where this is affecting people's mood and um, their mental health because people have been in for a long time and that was very refreshing um, and you can uh, it's info at the I don't have the address for that but that would be easy to find and the people it's a one hour program and you just hold up a book and say I'm reading this or I recommend this, or this is what I'm reading next. Lisa Prolman at the library um, does host it, and she is the most upbeat, joyful person. And to have that come into your home, every meeting that I've been on, we've been working and worrying. And I think that's an important thing, so I'm just sharing that. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Ginny? Yes. What day of the week is it and how often? 
Um, so they, I did it on a, I think it was a Tuesday night. They had a night one from seven to eight. And then they had a Wednesday one in the morning. And I forget the exact time. But I only did it once because I've had seven budget meetings. And so I didn't have opportunity to do it again. But that just finished last night. So um, I can look through this maybe while I'm talking. If I, I, I know I got an email. I'm, I, I should look and see. I'm sure I can find it. Yeah. yeah. And is everybody reading the same book or they're just talking about the book that they're reading? No, it's fascinating. They're all talking about what they're reading mm -hmm. or what they've recommended. And um, Tim Blagg, who used to be the editor, was on. And um, I actually, I'm in a regular book group. And it's it's better than that because you get somebody else says this is good and then Lisa had a couple of suggestions like this audio book or this book for um, you know for high schoolers is really great for adults and I'll find the picture of that in a second I'm scrolling through and then I'll put it up to the thing to show you it, it was just I think we're at the point where we have to start thinking outside of the box. Yeah. I just can't imagine if we lived in a city and couldn't go out in our yard or you know, take a walk down the street. They, they must, I mean, I, you know, they do experiments with mice and rats and they go nuts if they're confined. Mm -hmm. So that's, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of that in these cities and they're all trying to escape to the country though, unfortunately, and bring their COVID with them. Mm -hmm. But eventually. Okay, well, that was a great announcement. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Good to know. Um, all right, so the next meeting will be uh, June 11th. And um, I'll follow up. And things and let you know. Uh, I'm also going to call um, Cynthia and see, see, how, see how she's doing. Um, um, and Doug? Excuse me, and Doug, yeah. And, and can you let us know an email? Just, you know, I say will. if you want email contact or anything. Yeah. Okay. I it made me think that I said I'd call because it made me think that if people are having trouble with their computer, then right. they're not going to be able to respond to these things. Right. Right. Okay. Very good. Can you move it over just a little bit? <laughs> Virtual brown bag book displays. Okay. Unfortunately, I cut out the last part. I was mailing this to someone, mm -hmm. but if you just put virtual brown bag, if you entered that, you'd find it. I should write to Doug too, because I actually thought something must have been wrong when he wasn't there too. I'll send him a little um, message via messenger. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna move to adjourn the meeting. If we might have two or three minutes after that, if I could just, it's not it's not related to this, so I just want to socialize for a second. <laughs> I'll move to adjourn. Second. Um, and now um, you're in charge of the stick and everybody. <laughs> we lost our thread there. Okay, first of all, we had a motion from Lynn, seconded by. You can have Ginny second it. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> And I have hands vote. Okay, three to zero. <laughs> and then as far as uh, having a moment, you've got about, I give you five to 10 minutes. There's another meeting coming up at two that may or may not con conflict with this one. So I want to sign off by 155. Okay. I just wanted to 
say a silly thing and then I really love your hair, Marco. I lost my hair. <laughs> it came back curly. And okay, so you know. Well, it's a whole new experience, but my attitude was I have hair. <laughs> right. Oh, I know. I know. I just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> well, none of us do at this point. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad ears. It goes into my ears and it tickles. <laughs> I'm glad you're better, and I'm glad you have hair. Well, thank you. 